The story behind the song. the close of the Second War with Great Britain, the War of 1812, just following the raid of the British upon the city of Washington, we see a young man hurrying along the streets of Baltimore, Maryland, a look of earnest intent upon his face, determination in every vigorous stride. Francis Key. John Skinner, greetings. What's the reason for this haste? Have you heard of the plight of old Dr. William Beans? Dr. Beans? No, what's happened? He's under arrest on board the British flagship. Good heavens. What for? Well, doubtlessly acting from patriotic motives, he placed a pack of British camp followers under arrest and clapped them in jail for disturbing the peace in Upper Marlboro. He's magistrate there, isn't he? Yes, but that didn't seem to impress the British Navy. I've been assigned the task of trying to save the old doctor from hanging. Hanging? I'm quite sure it's just a threat that we must keep our hands off any British sympathizers henceforth. You're going to the British flagship? I am, right now. But man... Isn't that dangerous? Dangerous? <laughs> of course it's dangerous. You can't walk into the hands of the enemy without danger. I'll go with you. What? Yes, I'll go with you. You'll need someone to help you. Oh, very well. Thank you, John. Come along. <laughs> Francis Scott Key and John Skinner embark upon a small boat which takes them directly to the British flagship on the morning of September 6th, 1814, and are ushered into the quarters of Vice Admiral Sir George Coburn. Well, well, gentlemen, this is indeed an honor. Thank you, sir. My quarters are small, but ample for my needs until I return to England. Pray be seated. Be seated, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, uh, you are Mr. Francis Scott Key? I am, sir. And of what service can I be to you, sir? We seek the release of an American citizen, one Dr. William Beans, whom your forces took captive some days ago. <laughs> oh, so that's it. It is. <laughs> it is, is it? Well, well, well. I can't say that I'm surprised, gentlemen. Very well. We shall see. Lieutenant? Aye, sir. Bring the prisoner Beans to me here. Aye, sir. He's an irascible old chap, isn't he? I fear he'd make a poor naval man. In what way, sir? Well, he doesn't like the food, nor his bed, nor his guard. <laughs> Indeed, you would have thought the Prime Minister himself were aboard the ship. The manner in which we cater to the old doctor's whims. There, ah, the doctor himself. Come in, my good friend. I'm not your good friend. And I demand this outrage cease at once. I demand my release. Oh, now, 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 doctor, you must be patient. Patient? Patient? Do you realize, sir, that you are detaining a citizen of the United States of America? I realize, sir, that now I am detaining three citizens of the United States of America. What? Do you mean that you're holding Mr. Skinner and myself as prisoners? Not as prisoners, gentlemen. As in forced guests. Ah, oh, this is an insult. No, no, not an insult, my good doctor. I am paying all of you a most generous and gracious compliment. I do not understand. I shall explain myself, Mr. Key. In a few days, our fleet sails under battle orders for certain maneuvers, which, if known in circles of the American Army or Navy, would doubtless fail. 
I know, of course, that you gentlemen are patriots of your own country and would not hesitate to reveal any secrets you might have learned while aboard this ship. So, I detain you as guests of the British Navy. And where is the compliment, if you please, sir? Ah, the compliment. Yes, yes. Quite simple, Mr. Key. Instead of allowing you to return to your homes and chancing that you withhold the information, I invite you to remain here because I know that you are patriots. For a week, the three Americans are held aboard the British ship until on the night of September 13th, we find them on deck, talking among themselves. I have heard news, Key. What is it, Skinner? Quickly. Yes, man, this suspense. One of the sailors told me the British are attacking Fort McHenry tonight. Fort McHenry? Then that is our destination. I have heard, too, that while the fleet attacks the fort by sea, General Ross will be attacking North Point by land. And Major Armistead with a handful of men at the fort. Small wonder Sir George detained us with such information floating about. Yes, and here we are. Three able-bodied Americans, helpless to lend assistance to our country. Uh, I'm going below. I will not stand here to see my country fired upon without being able to lift a finger in defense. And poor Dr. Beans, still the militant. Oh, the night is black. I wish we could see. All we shall see, John, is the fire from these cannons and the answer from Fort McHenry. Until dawn. Yes, until dawn. Oh, when will it begin? Not impatient, John. No, no. Just uneasy. This waiting. Wait no more, John. It's beginning. Oh, what will they do at Fort McHenry? Probably return the fire. Yes. There. Skinner, can you see anything at the fort? No. You cannot see the flag by any chance, can you? No. Wait. Yes. Yes. Yes, I see it too. What are you doing? Writing. On an old envelope? What are you writing? A little verse. I didn't know you were a poet. No, not a poet, John. Just a writer of verses. Oh, how can you write under these conditions? Let the thought suit the inspiration. What? What do you mean? Wait. I have another line. The rocket's red glare. Now, oh, yes. The bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night our flag. Through the night, the two Americans stand watching, watching, watching. Then, toward dawn... Oh, this awful night. It's most over, I think, John. Yes, look, there in the east, a faint glow of light. Where? Oh, yes, I see it. We shall soon know the fate of those poor devils at the fort. Yes, soon. Let us hope they've withstood the fire. We'll do more than hope. We'll pray. Do you see anything yet, Francis? My eyes are weary from watching. At times, I, I think I can see, and then I realize it's just imagination. Look, is that imagination? No. By heaven, you're right. Armistead has held them off. The flag is still there. A few days later, after the three enforced guests had been released from Admiral Coburn's flagship, Francis Scott Key was in his study when the door burst open and his two friends, Skinner and Dr. Beans, rushed in. Francis. Francis, look. See what they've done. Yes, it's wonderful, young man. You've done the country a service which the people can never forget. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, sit down. Uh, uh, sit down, he says. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't sit down now if my life depended upon it. I, I, I'm thrilled. Well, what in the world are you talking about? Look. Why, why, it's my verse. Printed. Yes. 
I hope you won't be angry with me, Francis. But I showed your poem, the copy you made for me, to the editor of the newspaper. He had it printed, and thousands of copies of it have been distributed all over Baltimore. I'm highly honored, John. My thanks to you. Ah, but this is this is far greater than any of us can realize now, Mr. Key. What do you mean, Doctor? I mean simply this. There's not the slightest doubt in my mind but that this poem of yours will cement the faltering hopes of the people. You know how the public mind has been wavering as to the wisdom of this war. I... <laughs> I thought to do my share by my rash act a few days ago, but... I was going about it with malice in my heart. You, young man, you have looked out over the bitter forces of this horrible war. You've scanned the horizon far above the hate of conflict and have seen aright. Francis Key, you have created the masterpiece which will inspire the American people to go on, to fight the war to the end, to strive with more vigor for the great final victory we must win. I didn't create this poem, gentlemen. It was born of the union of pity for those who have fallen and my innate love for my country. If the people can be brought closer together by it, I'm happy. I... I have not been able to enter the war actively. And if this can be of service, if the people will remember it, I... I shall be immeasurably happy. Oh, say, can you... 